all three of you are engaged in uh, counseling practices, therapy, you, you have uh, services that you, you are, are offering to people who are coming into your office and sharing, you know, I think about it this way, it feels like they're, they're spilling their guts to you. And sometimes th they are, you know, the, the whole process of sharing everything about their lives. And so you get a, a picture into a lot of people's specifics, but over time those specifics form generalities, things that you see in a lot of people maybe the common, the common challenges that our society are up against. What are, what are you, if you could just name those things, what are you seeing on a consistent basis that people are bumping up against when it comes to their mental health? Anxiety is very common. Uh, depression, uh, we, uh, we, I have a number of students that come in and they're dealing with clients who are dealing with suicidal ideation, uh, tendencies towards self-harm, Lots of times it's just issues with coping and strategies that we're using in terms of coping that aren't the best, uh, moving into addiction sometimes or uh, violate, getting into conflictual relationships uh, with people that are important to them or maybe violating covenants, those types of things. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, with my younger population, and this is kind of, when I say young, I'm kind of saying 11 to like late 20s because um, I don't work with anybody younger than 11 in my office. Um, there's a lot of um, kind of battles in the home or even within themselves about how to engage technology. Um, there is, along with the anxiety, the depression, the suicidal ideation, the way that just culture in general and our access to like so much um, variety online and with our phones kind of causes a lot of turmoil in the home and for the family. Um, and then there's a lot of relational conflict as a result of that and then an increased um, amount of anxiety and depression in teenagers or people that are going through these life transitions trying to figure out who they are and what they believe, where they belong. Um, it's really overwhelming and can lead to despairing things like suicide, so. Let's, uh, let's start maybe with anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I was uh, in high school, everybody had anxiety. It meant like they twitched a little bit and they're just like nervous. You know, there was a test coming up and I was anxious about it. I've mm -hmm. got anxiety. But I think um, maybe our culture has overused words that are mental health words and maybe use them in the wrong way. And so I think in all these conversations, it's important to define our terms. How would you help us understand the characteristics of uh, anxiety in, in the sense of what we're talking about here? I think anxiety is a very interesting kind of thing because strangely to say it actually I think in some ways is a God-given thing to keep us alive and to keep us safe. There are things for which we should be anxious about. Um, anxiety, when you feel anxiousness, you, you have sweaty palms much like this. Uh, <laughs> or you, um, you can feel your heart rate going up or your breathing going up. Kind of the things that are common to panic attacks. Um, the thing is we're designed really for those acute moments of anxiety to pass quickly and then to sort of return. Chronic anxiety is, is when that just doesn't, that doesn't dissipate and it just feels oppressive. Like I can't, that feeling of I walk into this room and anxiety is still with me. I can't leave it behind. And it impacts my focus, my, my ability to concentrate, my capacity to function. And it just feels like I'm in a constant state of threat in a lot of ways. Uh, and so it's that sort of ongoing stressful kind of response. Now to your point, I, you know, I think uh, there's an optimal level of anxiety sometimes. I, I, I think it's good that I might get anxious about a test coming up because it helps me think, well, I should prepare for that. Athletes talk about, I get butterflies in my stomach before the big game. That's probably because they're invested in what's going on. So. I don't mean to completely demonize anxiety. It's a kind of a God-given thing that, that can turn south if it gets too, uh, too, too um, I don't know, overused. Yeah. yeah. Too chronic. There you go. Thank you. I like to think of chronic anxiety as glitter. We all know what happens with glitter. It gets everywhere. It's really hard to get rid of, hard to clean up. Kind of feels like it's always with us. Um, and I think in young people, anxiety can present as like an irritable mood or anger. And that can be really confusing for parents or caregivers um, because that can be received relationally as disrespect or sass or um, defiance. And 
Now we not only have somebody that has anxiety they need help with, but we have a relational reality. And now the glitter's on everyone in the family. So, yeah. You know, Dan, one of the things that I think when we keep unpacking anxiety and like, so what really is that threat that I was talking about? When you take that, when you peel that back, it often gets back to some version of, do I feel safe or, or do I matter? Mm. And um, I think that those are kind of common messages that really bring about that threat on some level. 